I'm Dr. Keanu Sai, and I'm a political scientist specializing in international relations and public law, with particular emphasis on the legal and political history of Hawaii. I'm also a plaintiff in a lawsuit against the Obama administration that was filed on June 1, 2010 in Federal District Court in Washington, D.C. In order to better understand the lawsuit and its profound impact today, I have produced short vignettes that cover certain sections of the complaint. This particular presentation covers the United States' unilateral seizure of the Hawaiian Islands in 1898. After the Hawaiian Kingdom government was illegally overthrown, two executive agreements were entered into between President Cleveland of the United States and Queen Liliuokalani of the Hawaiian Kingdom in 1893. The President entered into these executive agreements under his sole constitutional authority to represent the United States in foreign relations and neither Congress nor the courts can intervene without violating the separation of powers doctrine, which would be an encroachment upon the executive power. The first agreement, called the Liliuokalani Assignment of Executive Power, binds the U.S. President and his successors in office to administer Hawaiian Kingdom law. The second agreement, called the Restoration Agreement, binds the U.S. President and his successors in office to restore the Hawaiian Kingdom government and for the monarch thereafter to grant amnesty to those who committed treason on January 17, 1893. It wasn't long before the Congress took active steps to prevent the President from carrying out the executive agreements, and by 1897, there were two failed attempts to acquire the Hawaiian Islands by a treaty of session. The first in 1893 under President Harrison, and the second in 1897 under President McKinley. Both President Cleveland and President McKinley have violated the terms of the 1893 executive agreements. Despite these egregious violations of international law, Hawaii still remained an independent and sovereign state. However, the political landscape was about to radically change and war would soon break out in the Pacific and the Caribbean which would profoundly affect Hawaii. On April 21, 1898, the United States declares war on Spain, and fighting will take place not only in Cuba and Puerto Rico, but also in Guam and the Philippines. Within two weeks after war breaks out, Admiral Dewey defeats the Spanish fleet in Manila Bay on May 1st and begins the occupation of the Philippines in Guam. Fighting is now concentrated in Puerto Rico and Cuba. The occupation of the Spanish colonies in the Pacific now calls for the seizure of Hawaii as a military necessity to reinforce Admiral Dewey's occupation. On May 4, 1898, House Representative Francis Newlands from Nevada submits a resolution of annexation to the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. The committee begins to take testimony. But a resolution, however, is not a session, but a congressional action limited in authority to U.S. territory. In testimony submitted to the House Committee, Captain Alfred Mahan of the U.S. Navy stated, If we preoccupied the Hawaiian Islands, fortifications could preserve them to us. And General Schofield of the Army stated that if we do not occupy and fortify Pearl Harbor, our enemy will occupy it as a base from which to conduct operations against our Pacific coast. The resolution was thereafter taken out of the committee and put on the floor of the House of Representatives for a vote before proceeding to the Senate. There was much debate in the House that centered on whether or not U.S. congressional laws have any force and effect beyond the borders of the United States. Representative Ball from Texas stated, the annexation of Hawaii by joint resolution is unconstitutional, unnecessary, and unwise. I challenge not the advocates of Hawaiian annexation, but those who advocate annexation in the form now presented, to show warrant or authority in our organic law for such acquisition of territory. He continued to state, it, state that the very presence of this measure here is the result of a deliberate attempt to do unlawfully that which cannot be lawfully done. On May 31, 1898, 
The Senate was holding a secret hearing on the war and the House resolution, and Senator Henry Cabot Lodge stated the McKinley administration was compelled to violate the neutrality of those islands. The protests from foreign representatives had already been received and complications with other powers were threatened that the annexation or some action in regard to those islands had become a military necessity. A fervor of wartime anxieties plagued the Congress. Despite the objections in the House, the resolution was passed and reached the Senate in June. On June 21st, the New York Times reported comments made by Senator Stephen White of California on the Senate floor. White stated, The House resolution declared there had been a session which Congress was to accept, ratify, and confirm. He demanded to know what session had been made and what lawyer in the Senate would state there had been a session. He maintained there had been no session, as there could not have been without the concurrence of both parties. According to constitutional scholar Gary Bourne, American courts, commentators, and other authorities understood international law as imposing strict territorial limits on national assertions of legislative jurisdiction. The Supreme Court in Rose v. Heimley stated that the legislation of every country is territorial. In the Apollon, the U.S. Supreme Court explained that the laws of no nation can justly extend beyond its own territory, for it would be at variance with the independence and sovereignty of foreign nations. And in 1937, the U.S. Supreme Court resounded, our Constitution, laws, and policies have no extraterritorial operation unless in respect of our own citizens. In other words, there are territorial borders that surround the United States and congressional laws have no force and effect beyond those borders. The United States could no more annex the Hawaiian Islands by a congressional joint resolution based on the war with Spain than the Congress could pass a joint resolution annexing Afghanistan based on the war on terrorism. The Senate passed the resolution and on July 7, 1898, President McKinley signed it into U.S. law. The Hawaiian Islands were occupied for the second time on August 12, 1898, where formal ceremonies were held fronting Iolani Palace in Honolulu, where the Hawaiian flag was lowered and the U.S. flag hoisted over the palace. People in Hawaii knew that the United States could not claim to have annexed the islands without a treaty. This is evidenced in a newspaper printed on the island of Maui on October 20, 1900. The article stated, Thomas Clark, a candidate for territorial senator from Maui, holds that it was an unconstitutional proceeding on the part of the United States to annex the islands without a treaty, and that as a matter of fact, the islands are not annexed and cannot be, and that if the Democrats come into power, they will show the thing up in its true light and demonstrate that the islands are de facto independent at the present time. The editor then chimes in and says, Thomas, necessity knows no law, and it was absolutely necessary to annex the islands at the time it was done. And further, Thomas, if it becomes necessary to annex Cuba, it will be done quicker than a wink. It is but fair to give you credit in your view, Thomas, but you don't quite understand the American people just yet. Hence, you are very misleading. So important was it to portray that the Hawaiian Islands were annexed by a treaty and not a congressional joint resolution, a propaganda campaign was initiated in Washington, D.C. In 1901, the U.S. State Department published a book, History of the Department of State of the United States. In it, they addressed the annexation of Hawaii. The publication stated, a treaty was negotiated by Secretary Foster, agreed upon by both parties, and sent to the Senate by President Harrison, February 14, 1893. President Cleveland withdrew the treaty. President McKinley revived the question, and a treaty was ratified by both parties. An annexation consummated September 16, 1898, 
which effected the absorption of the Sandwich Islands into the domain of the United States. This is not true. Here in the islands, the insurgents who were in control of the territorial government began to rename schools to have it appear Hawaii was annexed to the United States. Abraham Lincoln Elementary School, Theodore Roosevelt High School, and William McKinley High School, which used to be known as Honolulu High School. On February 23, 1911, Sanford Dole dedicated a statue of William McKinley. As a former judge on the Hawaiian Kingdom Supreme Court, he understood the limitation of congressional law and its limit to U.S. territory. And Dole remained a fugitive of Hawaiian law, and if it wasn't for President McKinley, he would have been indicted and prosecuted for committing treason, after which the Queen would have granted amnesty according to the executive agreement. It was important for the insurgents to continue and promote the propaganda of a treaty of annexation and not a joint resolution. Here in the right hand of the statue is the document of annexation. And here let me highlight what was engraved on that document. This is an untrue statement. The insurgents were put in control of the territorial government by President McKinley, and history books used in the public schools promoted the myth of annexation. For over a century, the world was led to believe that Hawaii was made a part of the United States, and its history as a sovereign and independent state was erased from international memory. Despite the propaganda of annexation, the Hawaiian Islands were never made a part of the United States and continues to remain an independent and sovereign state. And the successors in office of President Cleveland, which includes President Obama, are bound to faithfully execute the 1893 executive agreements to administer Hawaiian Kingdom law and to restore the Hawaiian Kingdom government. For more information on the federal lawsuit, Tsai versus Obama, at all, visit www.hawaiiankingdom.org.